Hi, my name is Teal Francis, and I am the Programs and Communications Coordinator at Fairbanks Arts Association. I'm thrilled to be recording an artist talk today in conjunction with our September 2021 exhibition, Home, Disability, and Creativity in a Pandemic Lockdown by Avery Skaggs. Avery was born and raised in Juneau, Alaska, and began exploring paint as soon as he could sit upright in his wheelchair. His style is a form of action painting, often called abstract expressionism. Avery is nonverbal and his physical expressions through his paintings are both subtle and bold. Each piece engages Avery's energy, which is at times close and contained hand gestures and at other times broad and reaching, sweeping across the canvas. Avery has exhibited numerous solo and group exhibitions in Juno since 2010. Home, Disability, and Creativity in a Pandemic Lockdown is a body of works Avery created almost entirely in a newly fashioned art studio in his garage, an alternative space created by his team when access to his previous community studio space was unexpectedly lost due to the pandemic. The exhibition is on view in the Bear Gallery from September 3rd to the 24th, 2021. To begin the talk, I'll turn it over to Avery Valise, Avery's art representative. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, I first met Avery shortly after I moved to Juno in 2010. He had his first solo show at the canvas called Synergy, and I was immediately captivated by his style, his thousands of meticulous hand movements over the wooden canvas with acrylic paint, and he captured easily hundreds of hours of work on each piece. I'm especially drawn into all the textures and layers within each painting, which is something you have to see in person to truly appreciate. Throughout the last decade, Avery has painted at the canvas, canvas to reach four days a week with his friends. And I regularly also utilize the same space for teaching community art classes, as well as a couple solo shows of my own. You can say that Avery and I ran parallel lives through the canvas, always sharing space and colleagues but not interacting much due to different schedules and services. Over the years, various staff members at the Canvas have partaken in Avery's creative process and marketing. However, Reach's primary mission involves providing art as a form of therapy, not intended to support an individual's business endeavors. Around 2018, due to severe budget cuts, Reach was no longer able to provide their clients exposure for their creations. And Avery needs someone, actually a whole team, to ensure that his workflow is consistently well supported and not interrupted and that he continues to exhibit for all to enjoy. A little over two years ago, I was asked if I'd be interested in representing Avery independently, including assisting with art guidance for his caregivers who oversee his production, art shows, and setting up his business, Avery Art. I enthusiastically jumped at the opportunity. Avery is a professional working artist who paints on average 20 hours a week, has had several been seven total solo shows here in Juneau and is well known in the community. He is quite prolific and has easily painted a few hundred pieces. When I came on, the first major task was to collect all of Avery's available paintings we could find, catalog them, and bring them all to his house for permanent inventory and storage. Many of his pieces have walked off over the years, tucked between cabinets, hung somewhere and forgotten, or taken. It was important to me especially as a fellow artist, to preserve his intellectual property by holding accountability to his inventory and pricing at a competitive cost to any other professional artist. Because Avery is art is abstract, he's not able to let us know his personal thoughts about his work. For simplicity's sake, I have labeled his pieces by dimension and chronological number. So for example, 12 by 16 underscore five simply means that a piece is the fifth painting that is 12 inches by 16 inches in Avery's inventory. Abstract art is archetypal and will have a personal impact on each individual. I don't want to impose my own feelings into Avery's art for others by naming his paintings for him. Over the years, people have gone back and forth regarding framing. While framing does have a wonderful polished look that feels traditionally professional, I personally love the subtle marks of clumps of paint Avery has made around the edges. Sometimes these unfinished sides are my favorite parts of the piece. For me, they capture Avery's energy that extends far beyond the canvas plane. If you've ever seen Avery's workspace, you know paint is permanently spotted everywhere, 
As the canvas itself often gets thrown around, covering his work area, floor, self, and wheelchair. Covering up the edges with a frame, for me, erases or contains Avery's energy that demands to be free and explosive. The title of this show, Home, Disability, and Creativity in a Pandemic Lockdown, is inspired heavily from Josh's insights as to what it was like living through lockdown at the house with Avery during COVID. The canvas also abruptly closed in March 2020, and there was a mad rush to get all of Avery's remaining supplies and artwork moved into the house. Josh facilitated setting up a studio for him in the garage, and overnight found himself thrown into Avery's daily art process. I'll pass off to him to speak to that experience in a few minutes after I share this brief video of Avery working on the show. We have selected 40 pieces for this show, all made at Avery's home during COVID. So please enjoy. I just have one last note from me, and that's that we have an online Avery Art store where you can purchase his original paintings, and he has other merchandise with a variety of his products, such as home decor, uh, bags, leggings, sketchbooks, all showcasing his beautiful paintings. So that's at averyart.bigcartel.com. And now I'll pass it off to Josh Smith, my Avery Art co-partner who's made all of this possible and Avery Art, or Avery Skaggs, the artist himself. Hi, I'm Josh. Uh, this is Avery Skaggs, the artist that we're talking about today. Um, I've known Avery for six and a half years and um, I've actually lived with Avery for over five years now. One cool story that I share with most people that I interact with regarding Avery, in particular him as an artist, is when I moved to Juneau uh, seven years ago, I went to one of his art shows, not really knowing anything about people that experience disabilities, um, let alone who Avery was or what the canvas was. And, you know, I saw a lot of art that night at the first Friday here in Juneau, and it was Avery's art that really spoke to me. And 
I didn't so much as read, the, you know, the placard that explained who he was or, you know, what the show was about. I couldn't have told you anything about it, but I did see the art. I was fascinated by it. And it was a month or two later that I met Avery and started um, working for a company that provides services to Avery to support him, you know, in his life. And only to come to realize at that point that it was his art that had really spoken to me that night. And I, I think that's I think that's really cool. And I think that's what really um, has motivated me to be so invested um, in, in Avery's art production, especially during this last year and a half. Um, it's been really exciting to see the evolution that's taken place of Avery's art since I've got to know him, to look at the stuff that he produced before I knew him and then see it evolve over the years. <clears throat> I would say that this last iteration of evolution is probably the most dramatic one I've seen yet. Um, and that has a lot to do with the pandemic. And we, uh, in March, 2020, we had to really think quickly about how we were gonna facilitate a re continuing to engage in his passion um, without any sort of, um, you know, break in him, him being able to engage in that stuff. And what we did ultimately was uh, put together a very crude initially studio in his garage. Um, and we did the best we could. And it was a period of learning for us, um, a period of, you know, Avery being patient with the process. Um, and I think we, we were ultimately very successful in um, allowing him to continue engage, engaging in, in his business and in his hobby. And I think the artwork that he's produced during this past year, particularly in 2020, is uh, very revealing of not only his essence, because his essence is revealed in all of his work. Um, but I think what really stands out to me through this time is um, how adaptable he is. Um, I think that's really what I want to highlight here is, you know, we all had to adapt, you know, during the pandemic and um, we, we made some significant changes, but Avery, Avery has really shown his resiliency and his adaptability through this. And that, that really shines through in his artwork. And I, I strongly believe that Avery's art is one of his primary ways to communicate with the world. Um, you know, as, as has been mentioned, Avery's nonverbal. Uh, but he's very, very expressive. And the way he expresses himself is, you know, with eye contact, facial expressions, body language, vocalizations, and first and foremost, through his art. And um, I think it's been a real privilege to work with him during the past year and a half to experience what it's like for him to produce. And Avery does need assistance with his art. He does. Uh, and that's what we're here for. You know, staff can help pick the colors and orient the canvas and, you know, situate his wheelchair um, so he can, you know, have access to the paint within his grasp. But he is the painter. There are no strokes on any of these pieces that didn't come from his fingers or his manipulation of other objects. So um, I want to share a brief statement from one of his primary staff that works with him through this process. Um, she said, being a part of Avery's team and working with him on his art has been extremely eye-opening for me and has proven to me that everyone is capable of working and having a career. Avery takes his job very seriously and just like any artist, he has days where he does not want to paint. My job as Avery support staff is to help him identify colors that go well together, move the canvas around as he paints, and talk with him throughout the process to keep him engaged and inspired. Avery primarily uses his hands to paint, but also loves painting with different supplies such as balloons, strings, and pipe cleaners. I am always trying to think of different material that Avery can use to paint with to provide unique detail to his paintings. Sometimes he's interested in my suggestions, but often he's not. So I thought that was a good encapsulation of, uh, you know, what it's like to assist Avery with, with his art. Um, I think really um, what I want to highlight is um, 
you know, as, as has been said before, you know, in talking about Avery, um, he really lives in the moment with his paintings. Um, everything that he does is, isn't necessarily with um, foreseen design. He just goes with the flow and that's what's so, you know, fascinating to see the evolution of the, the pieces. And it was fun working with him, capturing some time-lapse to see um, what that evolution of any specific piece was. Um, and as we, you know, went through this learning process with Avery and understanding his um, subtleties and his cues that he would, you know, give us and his, you know, ultimate process, um, there were some pieces that looked markedly different today than they did a month ago as the layer and layers and layers, you know, keep being repeated or layered on top of each other. So um, I think that's, that's kind of what I've got for now. <laughs> I'd like to turn it over to uh, Sam Skaggs, Avery's father. Thanks, Josh, that was great. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add. I mean, this is Avery, both Avril and Josh have said what Avery, uh, why he loves to paint so much. I mean, he's, it's temporal. His work is, is of the moment, um, but there's many moments in each painting. And I think it comes out um, when you actually can see them in person. So I'm really grateful to the Bear Gallery and, and, and Fairbanks to, to uh, show his work. Um, I, I know you'll be happy. I know people will come and go, wow, what's that? Because I, everybody that I've ever uh, talked to at different shows that Avery's had, there's, there's something in one piece that says something to every person. Uh, not the same thing, but that's, I think, the beauty of this art is that uh, it, 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 it shows what's behind it um, without us really even knowing that, if that makes sense. So, uh, in a way that's kind of a pure art form that, that I think it allows Avery to, to share with us. So um, I just want to be, I'm just grateful, uh, Bear Gallery. Thanks Teal and, and Avril for getting this show together and Josh uh, helping not only get all the paintings painted, but all the packaging and everything to get it up to Fairbanks. So um, Avery's been at this for more than 10 years now uh, and we realized that this was something uh, early on when he when he first was learning to crawl, which was at age six. Uh, he didn't crawl very far, but once we started putting paint on the floor and he could get in with that paint in his hands, we realized this is this is something we had to keep encouraging. So, um, thank you. Well, we're so excited to have this exhibition at the Bear Gallery. Um, we're really thrilled and thank you so much for all your work and organizing and being here today. Um, for the audience, if you're able, we encourage you to visit uh, the Bear Gallery to experience home disability and creativity in a pandemic lockdown. The exhibition uh, is on view from September 3rd to the 24th and the gallery is open Monday through Saturday um, from noon to 6 p.m. Thank you for watching our September 2021 20, Artist Talk.